Okay, uh, good morning everyone. Uh, I'll keep this relatively quick so we can get back to talking about uh, Tim's very interesting proposal uh, in the, the remaining five minutes at the end. Um, I'm David, I'm going to be uh, talking about whether we want to run K-unit tests even more in user space than they already do. Um, few people have uh, expressed that that's something they'd like, so uh, uh, let's have a little bit of an overview of that. I've got slides saying what K-unit is, but everyone I think in this room has got a pretty good idea, so you can look at those on your own time if you want to, or that. Equally, there are lots of new things in K-unit over the last year. Um, have a look at that, come and talk to me later if any of them particularly interest you. Um, but what we're going to talk about now is, you know, why we might want to run K-unit tests as, you know, standalone user space binaries, um, and what are the upsides, downsides, how do we want to do this if we want to do this. Um, so why, basically, testing things in kernel space is annoying. Um, the kernel is big, all of the tools that exist for user space tend to be a little bit both a you know, simpler, be more widely understood than um, kernel space ones. Most people would rather just use GDB than having to set up, you know, KGDB, et cetera. Um, building an entire kernel um, and then booting an entire kernel to test your one function or your one small data structure is kind of overkill. Um, takes a long time. Uh, no one wants to wait for everything to happen. Um, and when you're debugging it, you've got all of these other things happening in the background to keep the kernel running. You've got, you know, weird signals happening. You've got all sorts of exciting things, huge amounts of code it takes GDB to load in, parse symbols. You know, better not to do it. And then if we're taking code and sharing it with other people, like we've found a bug in the compiler um, and want to send it to the compiler people, they'd much rather a reproducible case that's like one C file than the entire kernel and a bunch of complicated configs. Um, and finally, there are user space tools in the kernel tree. Maybe we'd like to be able to test those too, ideally using something similar to where testing all of the other code in the kernel tree. Um, so what sort of things are this useful for? Library code, which is a recurring theme in, in KUnit talks, basically data structures, helper functions, parsers, self-contained or heavily abstracted things. Um, you know, these are the best things for unit tests in general, and you know, they work very well as totally isolated, often don't need to call into other kernel functions. Um, and a couple of examples, the Rosebush data structure that was posted to the list, the core VMA manipulation function refactoring, both have, you know, let's write tests and run them as separate user space binaries, often by, you know, Here's a header which implements a basic unit testing framework heavily inspired by KUnit and others. Um, as mentioned, if we want to share code between the kernel and something else, um, we need something that works both in the kernel and user space, whether that's an external library or whether that's you know, some piece of code within the kernel tree. Um, Tools in the kernel tree, Perf has its own um, unit test framework, which is inspired by KUnit, but isn't KUnit. Um, it would be nice to just be able to use the same thing for both. Um, and, you know, there are tests that we want to share with, with people outside the kernel community. I mentioned the compiler bug example. There are tests specifically for, you know, compiler-based hardening features and that, where this is, you know, a real aim. Um, when Case originally posted the stack init K unit test to check stack initialization, it also had a uh, you know, custom implementation of K unit in a header so that we could easily give it to compiler folks. Um, so that's several reasons why we might want to do this. Um, there are several things that might already do it, like the obvious question, why don't we just use a K self-test? They already run in user space. Um, uh, and maybe that's the right answer. Um, so, you know, we've already got a way of having tests written in user space, but 
K-Self test doesn't have quite the same variety of features specifically for unit testing that K-Unit does. Um, you know, equally, things like resource management stuff, um, you know, the parameterized test features, you can implement those on K-Self test, and maybe we should bring some of those features to K-Self test. Um, but K-Unit already has these in a, a simple way to... Um, K-Self test also really philosophically is more aimed at let's write tests that test the kernel we're running under. Um, it's not a hard and fast rule, but that's something that people you know, tend to think of when they think of K-Self tests. So this is philosophically perhaps a slightly different thing. And similarly, tools like Perf you know, aren't really you know, the running kernel. Um, Equally, why don't we just grab one of the many fine C and or C++ unit testing frameworks that exist in the world and use that. Um, and, you know, that again is a good idea. We don't want to have to reinvent something. These are widely known and used outside the kernel community. But, you know, much like with um, other things, we, we can't just reuse the exact same test in kernel mode and user mode if we've got, you know, a data structure or one of these, you know, tests that prods compiler um, things. Ideally, we can build the same test and build it into the kernel and run it as part of a running kernel or as a separate binary, which means we need to use the same framework. And um, while I think the FreeBSD folks have experimented with putting an off-the-shelf unit testing framework into the kernel, we have gone down a different path with KUnit. Um, and of course, you know, we'd then have two unit testing frameworks to deal with, two implementations um, living in the same tree. Um, why don't we just use UML, uh, user mode Linux? We're already doing this, um, and that's both the advantage and the disadvantage. Um, we don't get any new advantages from this because it's already what we're doing. So, you know, um, if, if this is all we want, we can, we can go home straight away. But uh, equally, you know, it's got some disadvantages. It, only works on x86 and x86-64, which kernel developers didn't mind quite as much, you know, 10 years ago compared to now. But, um, and if anyone wants to port UML to ARM, they have, you know, my eternal gratitude. Um, but it's also not lightweight, you know. It still have to build an entire kernel. You still have to wait for it to boot. Um, if you're debugging it, you still have to deal with a lot of weirdness because UML is made of very interesting hacks. Um, and, you know, God forbid you do something like this for, you know, testing perf or tools. You don't want to suddenly add a kernel where there wasn't one before. Um, how could we go about doing this? Uh, the obvious super simple implementation is what everyone's sort of already done where they've needed this is make a header that implements the bare minimum unit test framework you need, you know, define kunit log printf, you know, just absolutely the, the most simple thing you could do, have the assertions there behind an if def or a command line flag, build that instead. Um, this is super simple. Uh, for simple tests, it works very well. People are already doing it. Um, and it would be a great idea to take what people are already playing with and have one standardized implementation. But you lose a lot of features doing this super simple thing. Um, and we end up rewriting everything. Um, and it could be more interesting if you're dealing with bigger tests that span multiple files, just forcing an include in one spot. You know, a bit hacky there. We could refactor KUnit to add a user space backend as well as a kernel backend. Find all the bits where it calls into actual kernel functions and you know, find a way of splitting those off so we can either have user space implementations of those as well, uh, where that makes sense, or if it doesn't make sense, there's a KUnit feature that's really heavily integrated with the kernel and it doesn't make sense to have a test independently for it, we can just you know, carve that out and, and not include that in the user space version. Um, so that's great. It'd be pretty generic. Most tests would port across very easily. Um, you know, we'd get as many features as we can without too much effort. But, you know, it is more work than just having a single hacky header. Um, there's, you know, a question, and there's a question with all of these of, 
how do you want to deal with both code that runs in kernel space and code that doesn't in the same files in the same part of the tree. Um, that's ugly, whether we care, how we deal with it, that's a question. Um, and working out exactly what bits we can keep and what bits we can't and you know who wants to actually go and refactor all of this and how much time people have is a question. Very similarly, we can try to just split KUnit up into lots of individual modules, you know, say, okay, we're making the bit that emits KTAP a library, we can use that not just from KUnit in the kernel, but from user space programs or K self tests or, you know, tools. Um, similarly, we could split the mocking stuff out into something that could be used outside the context of a KUnit test. This is a really nice idea, but, you know, there are some some technical um, problems. All of this code depends pretty heavily on there being this struct K unit lying around, whether it's passed in manually or whether it's implicit in the current kernel thread and working out how we would handle that. You know, it could make things that are currently quite simple a little bit uglier in the process. Um, there's a fair amount of coupling between different bits. Um, and we've still got all the problems with the previous one. Someone's got to do a bunch of refactoring work and we need to work out how we're going to deal with kernel and user space code in the same spot. So that's basically, you know, the situation. Um, is this useful? Where would we want things to live? You know, do we need to put a whole bunch of tooling to support user space tests in? Um, can we expand our tooling to do that? Um, how do we make the decision of what should be one of these user space tests, what should be a kernel test, what should be both, can be compiled in either way, what should be a self-test. This is already a slightly fuzzy area. Um, uh, we have a great page of uh, documentation of when to use each, which still manages to uh, spawn arguments because <coughs> there's no one correct way of doing this. Um, that's a good way of... Uh, wasting time if we need to argue about something. Um, and if we are going to do something, how do we go about it? Do we start with the bare minimum header, merge all of the people doing that, and then just move on to something bigger when it actually becomes necessary? Um, do we go, let's go straight away and start refactoring things? Um, do we pull the implementation perf has of a user space thing out and rename everything KUnit? Uh, these are all options. Or do we do something entirely else? So, what do people think? Um, that's the myth. <laughs> Nearly. Hi, so I implemented the vma.c test. Mm. So, this is kind of relevant to me. Mm. Maybe I'm more excited about this than <laughs> many other people. But I, I feel like something iterative would be useful because right now in my implementation, I've done a hacky like assert true, assert false, and it's all just, it's mm -hmm. like the simplest possible thing. So, so having some like kunit.h would be really useful, I think. Um, when I implemented it, I had to do quite a lot of specialist kind of work to make it work. So we had to like very heavily, or I had to very heavily um, adjust the way that the VMA functions were, were structured, mm. such that we could then include like a, a separate header that would be the user land stubbed out version of functions. So it actually ended up being a very custom thing to do it. But I, yeah, I think it can be super useful for certain cases where you have like an algorithm that can be separated out. Like the VMA logic is really well suited to unit tests like that. But I think a lot of things probably aren't. So, yeah. so, like I, I, so I would say it kind of takes a lot of, of work potentially to do this. And it, it's, it has to be, probably has to be case by case, but it's really glorious to have GDB and have O0 and everything works. And one thing that um, my colleague Liam actually, he suggested something that for us that would be really exciting is you could take a, a some raw output from state from the kernel and import it into the user land uh, code and then be able to debug there, and that's hugely powerful potentially. Mm. And also, like a, another interesting thing is you can do things like fuzzing, and because the performance increase from running in user land is like potentially huge. So there's a lot of really fun stuff you could potentially do. 
But yeah, I think something iterative would be nice. Yeah, thanks. I think you've hit on one of the other the great things that I didn't mention, which is um, you know, certainly this isn't going to be useful for all or even most tests, which do call lots of kernel functions, but maybe we need a standard, here's a bunch of stubs for kernel functions that <coughs> you know, simple things need, but nothing else does, um, uh, which several people can share. Um, and you know, I know there's, I mentioned the Linux kernel library, which tried to do that by literally compiling the whole kernel in, but you know, a bunch of defines is better, I think. Yeah, I mean, I think it really works for modular code better than, than anything else. Uh, I wrote the maple tree. I also use this sort of framework, but um, the user space stuff. But the, uh, the problem I have with, with doing anything uh, K-unit wise, like I, I have to separate tests already because I use threading to test race conditions mm. uh, and RCU, so I have a dependency on uh, user space RCU and threading so that my tests can uh, you know, run. Um, so I have actually separated them into a module, or a module and user space, and the user space can run everything in the module, but not vice versa. So it, it, it would be nice to have something um, more standardized so that we can get um, into a framework that bots will run for me. Uh, because a lot of the time people will say, hey, I got this patch and it breaks testing and I put, go run this thing. and like, oh, what's that? And yeah, I think um, the, the two interesting things there are, you know, needing things like threading and that, you know, KUnit has very limited support for threading in the kernel. Um, but, you know, I don't think there's a problem with having user space only tests using something like this. Yeah. Um, and ideally, you could more easily say, well, these are the ones that actually only run in user space. These are the ones that run in kernel space. The ones that can run in kernel space, we can run either. Um, and yeah, hopefully, eventually, um, we'll also have tooling that, you know, we put these user space things in a, build them in a standard way, put them in a standard place, and we can, you know, have a config that, that runs them all. Yeah, I mean, I think y you need to make sure there's a way to either say this depends on having a library available for, for the tests in, in user space or, or something mm. like that. Which is, yeah, a whole other can yeah. of worms, but, uh, <laughs> you know, something well, to keep in mind. I just put it in the header you know, since yeah. apt get install. <laughs> So does anyone think this is a terrible idea? <laughs> does anyone want to do all of the work for me? <laughs> okay, well this is good feedback. I think we've, you know, definitely got you know, a lot of people who would find this useful. And as far as I can tell, the general view um, is, you know, do this in the most iterative, simple possible way, um, which is my preference too, because I want to do the most minimal amount of work. Um, sounds good. <laughs>